So any questions, anybody? Yeah, I had a couple questions. So in, um, in the probate arena where we kind of encounter or trust administration, where we encounter reverse mortgage issues is somebody dies and we get the demand letter from the reverse mortgage company pay up or we're going to foreclose. Um, and the letters I've been getting uh, from C-Link is actually one of the ones. They say 30 days. They say the person died, you're already in default. And I understand that's not the case. That's not correct. Thank yeah. you. So, and Champion is another one that, it, and so it's not from the lender. So what happens with reverse mortgages is they bundle all the reverse mortgages and they sell them to investors. And then FHA slash HUD has a servicer and the servicer has to meet certain guidelines. When somebody dies, the heirs have six months to, and they get extensions up to one year. So it's, I just saw a demand from uh, my customer called me, his mother had died like uh, two weeks ago and he got her remains and the demand letter from champion on the same day. And the demand letter is very deceiving. It's like, yes, you owe us this money, pay us now, right? <laughs> and so um, it's not the case. So what they do say is you have to let us know what you're doing. So I have a great article about what happens when somebody dies with a reverse mortgage and what the heir, you know, the heirs can do and this kind of stuff. And again, it's just contact the servicer and say, we're gonna sell we're going to refinance, we're going to do whatever we're going to do, but that's, the, the clock just starts at that time. It, they're not in, you know, foreclosure is what the terminology is, but it doesn't matter. This, I hope that helps. It does help. I, I would like to get that article. Yes. So, and what I see a lot, um, and what I've experienced is we send the death certificate and maybe for a probate, we say our client's going to be appointed um, administrator on this date and Alameda County sets hearings out three months out. Maybe they don't know about the reverse mortgage right away. And we try to get an extension and we talk to one person and then we call and, oh, that person's not here and anymore. Then I'll also and then they get foreclose. You. Then they foreclose. And we, or, and, you know, no, no, no. And I'll also get you HUD's contact information because yeah. unless the servicers have to meet contractually. Yeah, we've had some clients that had to get hard money loans, though. We couldn't get anywhere fast enough. So, yeah, so we can talk one off about that. Okay. Yeah. Um, Cheryl, and, if you send me the articles, I can send it with your PowerPoint um, and the YouTube link when we have the link from the recording. Love you. Okay. I have another question, if I can get another question. Um, so with uh, a lot of clients, I suggest the reverse mortgage option if, because a lot of people say, well, I can't live in this house anymore. I can't, you know, I want to downsize or I, I need to make repairs to it. And they consider selling it and then but they haven't thought about capital gains taxes um sometimes people come to me after they sell it and they'll say oh, the realtor never told me that i paid twenty four thousand dollars for it and it sold for you know 1.2 and a bunch of the money i was going to use for assisted living and or buying into a senior residential home i don't have the money and so um i know a lot of clients, I talk to them about looking into a reverse mortgage and then, you know, doing upgrades to the home so they can stay there as opposed to thinking, oh, we're just going to sell it. Um, you know, if, if they're a couple, I can, you know, I can tell them, well, maybe wait <laughs> until the first of you passes away and then you get a step up in tax basis, you know, uh -huh. when that spouse dies at, and then sell it after that. Um, sometimes they look at maybe transferring it to the kids and then having the kids sell it. But they're just different, you know, the capital gains taxes, I find a lot of people don't look at that as a reason to do maybe a reverse mortgage. Um, so I don't know what your experience is with that. If people think about, well, if I sell this, are they aware, oh, I'm gonna have to maybe pay a lot in taxes on it, especially if they have to so I mostly I work with customers to stay in their home and when when they do sell 
they're usually buying another home with a reverse mortgage. You know, they're doing the proceeds. So it, the capital gains doesn't really come into play with them. But what does come into play is property taxes. To your point, when they bought the home for 24,000 and now they're paying taxes on 50,000 and if they move counties, that's a big deal, you know, because they're now gonna pay it for the most part. Um, but I do have customers that can, you can buy, you can use this on properties one to four units. Um, condos, if they're FHA approved and there's a few of them in Alameda um, and single family residents, but you cannot use it to go to assisted living. So if they're moving into assisted living, um, then yes, they should be talking to you. They should be talking to the CPA about what they need to do ahead of time in order to prepare for those capital gains. Thank you. You're welcome.